The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen. Sing this aloud, proclaim it to the ends of the earth. The Lord has set his people free. God's people, happy Easter. happy Easter. Oh, how beautiful it is to be together with you. Um, lovely to, to see so many of your faces in person smiling back at me this morning. We welcome you if you're here in this space. We welcome you if this is your first time celebrating Easter with us in this space. We welcome you if maybe you are listening on the radio uh, outside in the parking lot. We welcome you if you are worshiping from home this morning. Um, we are all God's people together streaming in person however we make it happen let's send greetings to one another with a wave and a smile and a hello and a wave to the camera and certainly if there's someone here who who you don't know their face uh, be sure to introduce yourself uh, at some point this day before you leave this space Well, let's get right to singing the, the wonderful hymns of this very special season. Um, we'll jump right into hymn 362, Christ is Alive, and I invite you to stand if you're comfortable doing so.
is going to uh, take us through the scriptural Easter story. Um, this comes from all the books of the, all the four gospels in the Bible woven together, uh, as Moravians have done for a very long time in the, we in the readings for Holy Week. And so you'll hear um, lots of different threads of the story combined into one. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. The women had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who, has, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. Hymn 366, and, and again, uh, if you'd care to stand, it seems like a good day to rise up to sing, 366. <laughs> Magdalene ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they laid him. But these words seemed to, seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. 
He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. They saw the linen wrappings laying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head, the other at the feet. They, they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to the Father, and the Father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that, that he had, had said these things to her.
let me invite the kids to come up for the children's chat. Good morning. Oh, how wonderful to see all of you. It's fantastic. Is it a good day? Yeah. Anything, anything special about today? You got an Easter basket. I didn't get an Easter basket yet. Oh, oh, okay. We, we've even got stuff in our pockets. We're sustaining ourselves with treats gathered early this morning. So what do you know about Easter? What can you tell me about Easter? Anything, anything. Heath got an Easter basket. Anybody else get an Easter basket? Yeah? Jesus. Jesus came back to life? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool, pretty special. Um, anything look different in here than sometimes it does? <gasps> balloons, and there's a cross, yep, and there's balloons. We don't usually have balloons in here, do we? No. Anything where it's not supposed to be? <laughs> Do you think we're supposed to have a balloon up on the ceiling? <laughs> How are we going to get that down? Oh, okay, we have a vote for what, a crowbar. <laughs> we have a vote for a crowbar. How, how else could we get it down? What, a ladder. You think we have a ladder that tall? <laughs> we could jump or, or... The, the voice of reason in the room says, you could just wait for it to deflate. So, uh, yeah. We, we, we have an air mattress. There's an air mat. Was there a trampoline involved? Did I, or was that a ladder? Oh, no, but now we're thinking, okay, trampoline. Okay, so we, there's... Oh my gosh, now we've got the trampoline on top of the ladder. Oh, holy cow. So. <laughs> Jetpacks, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, well, we'll have to think about that and, and see what happens. And, um, and y'all, if you want to ask Ron Penrose later, he has a good suggestion too. So, but, um, so I don't know. What, what do you, a, a balloon that's like not been blown up yet is sort of, is it sort of sad looking? Yeah, it's just there's nothing quite as sad as a deflated balloon. So what, what, what feeling do you have when you see helium balloons when they're all risen up like that? Yeah, they're, they're happy, aren't they? So is this a joyful day? This is a joyful day. I asked if it was a good day before. Some of you said, yeah, kind of. But it always is a joyful day. It's a joyful day. And, um, and, and, and Heath's got that, that idea. I heard him say, because Jesus is risen. And so, yep, we have, we have balloons that remind us of that. Um, something happened on that cross before Jesus came back to life. Do you know what happened on that cross? He died on that cross, yeah. And um, it's a sad, sad, sad part of the story. But you know what? Somebody, somebody, I recently read a, 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 a note, a prayer actually, that, that somebody I knew wrote. And he talked about when Jesus was on the cross, when he was, he was up there, and it was very, very painful and awful and icky, but but what, it, what position was he in when he was on that cross? Yeah, he was kind of shaped like that cross. And his arms were spread out wide. And my friend told me that that reminded him that God loves you. 
this much. So put those arms out there. God loved you that much. Jesus loves you that much. And that's, that's amazing. And so the story got sad, but the story was fabulous when we remember how much God loved us. And, and that has everything to do with, with, with Easter and with, with Jesus uh, being alive, being risen, we say. And so we celebrate that today in lots and lots of ways. So um, sometimes those ways involve chocolate, <laughs> and sometimes those ways involve, in my house, they involve coconut, because we like coconut. And they involve flowers and even balloons. Um, but mostly what they involve is just remembering always, 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 like we always do around here, how much God loves us in special, special ways. No one else, no one else loves us quite like God does, and Jesus shows us that. So I'm going to send you um, back. Um, I was so happy to see you. Oh, 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 I, have a, I do have an instruction for you. At the end of the service, when, when we're all done this morning and ready to go home, if you want a balloon, come back up to the front and we'll make sure you get a balloon. All right? All right. And you just, you just keep pondering that one up on the ceiling. All right? Okay. All right. wanted to include uh, balloons in an Easter service and uh, I am just I'm just giddy I'm, I'm all excited that uh, we've been able to bring that idea to life and I had a wonderful team of uh, balloonatics you might call them uh, who helped me uh, bring this uh, to fruition today and so I want to give special thanks to uh, Nancy and Ron Penrose and and Joe and Ray do um, and we, we kind of bonded over the experience <laughs> of figuring out how to do this but thank you so very much if you have been here in this space uh, this past week, and it's okay if you weren't, this will still make sense, I'm going to recap, but if you have been here this past week to commemorate Monday, Thursday and Good Friday, you know that we have kept up the balloon theme throughout the tridium. 
We used colorful balloons um, on Thursday to, to signal a celebratory mood uh, back when Jesus' followers thought, they thought they were being invited to a festive Passover dinner uh, with their friends. And so, so they came that way and we started out in an upbeat manner. And then we popped those colorful balloons rather dramatically when the story took a turn toward the tragic. And then on Friday night when we gathered, we used black balloons to draw attention to the cross when we faced, as best we could, Jesus' crucifixion. And of course, now we've, we've switched out desolation and despair for surprise and joy. Balloons and Easter. It seems like such an obvious connection. He is risen. It's the very essence of resurrection, rising up to overcome adversity, rising up to overcome challenge, rising up to overcome defeat. Now it's true when you're working with helium balloons, sometimes they escape containment and they rise all the way to the ceiling. Isn't that just perfect? Resurrection is about not being contained by the most fearsome thing, the grave. So our escapee balloon uh, serves a wonderful purpose, has escaped um, on its own. If you want to know, we did learn earlier this week that if you have an escapee balloon like that and it doesn't belong there, a leaf blower can come in handy, just so you know. I wanna give a shout out to the adventurous minority among you who were at God's Acre earlier this morning. I've tried, but I haven't been able to convince most of you that standing in a graveyard at sunrise is a desirable way to observe Easter. But this is exactly why it's a significant action. It's a potent way to stare down death and win the contest. <laughs> By the way, if you haven't seen it, you might want to look this up. Yesterday, um, the Associated Press had an article circulating. Um, it was getting a lot of national attention. Its headline uh, read, Easter is March 31st this year. Here's why many Christians will wake up before sunrise to celebrate. Now, it wasn't exclusively about Moravians, but our denomination's pre-dawn rituals were prominently featured. And my colleague, the Reverend Ginny Tobiason from Home Moravian Church in Winston-Salem was quoted quite liberally uh, in the Washington Post, no less, um, and other places where it circulated. But it, it did provide a dose of positive press for our denomination. And there was that word again in, in the headline, rise, rise. The sun rises up. Jesus rises up. Hope rises up. When the sun rises in Longyearbyen, Norway, Longyearbyen, it's kind of spelled like it sounds, L-O-N-G-Y-E-R, long year, bin. When the sun rises there in early March, residents of, that, of the world's northernmost town greet the first pink rays breaking over the horizon by, by throwing an interesting um, celebration. They they have a week-long exotic fruit party. Mm -hmm. Yep, I, that's what I said. In the Arctic Circle, between November and February, Longyearbyen exists in complete darkness. 
typical grocery store produce in winter includes turnips, <laughs> carrots, and cold storage apples that have been around for a while. But when the sun rises, and it starts out just up for a little while each day, but when the sun first rises after all that darkness, town residents munch on tropical imports like mangosteens, guava, lychees, and pineapple. And they throw in some oranges and bananas and grapes too. And it's a unique way of acknowledging the conclusion of a seemingly endless night. It's kind of a peculiar ritual, but who are we to say anything about having peculiar rituals, right? I think spending large swaths of time without sunlight no doubt has a way of helping folks appreciate its return very deeply in a way that those who have experienced powerful loss appreciate renewal and revival, resurrection. It would be especially so, I would imagine, for anyone who didn't know when the sun might come back again, or even if it ever would. Barbara Brown Taylor posed a question I'd never thought of before. In her book, Learning to Walk in the Dark, she ponders why it often took three days for significant things to happen in the Bible. Jonah spent three days in the belly of the great fish. Paul spent three days blind in Damascus. Jesus spent three days in the tomb. Never thought about that pattern before. It occurred to her that from earliest times, people learned that was how long they had to wait in the dark before the sliver of the new moon appeared in the sky. For three days every month, they practiced waiting, waiting, waiting for resurrection. How uncertain and frightened Jesus people must have felt after his cruel execution and how long that wait must have been. In fact, they didn't know they were waiting for something else to happen. So they, I don't know, maybe, maybe they weren't. I don't think they were waiting around for, for something good to come of it. So, but, but thinking about the intensity of that time afterwards, how surprised, how surprised they were with the recognition that Jesus had indeed, has indeed risen. God has turned out to be more powerful than death. And if that's the case, there's ultimately not anything any of us should ever fear again. That's the power of resurrection. It's a new day. It's always a new day full of promise, full of forgiveness, full of goodness. And as I have said many times to you, it's not the ending point for us. It's our starting point. We know this to be true. That makes every day, again, a new day. On Thursday afternoon, I found myself speaking with a fellow on my front porch. He had pressed my doorbell and pulled me away from my preparation for evening worship. Um, he pulled me away because he wanted to sell me something. <laughs> and as I glanced around at the other homes uh, on Lorraine and Locust Streets, I, I could see other people pressing other doorbells on other porches and it became clear to me that the sales force had been dropped off by a van and instructed to fan out across the neighborhood. So it crossed my mind that this fellow was probably a day laborer of sorts, signing on to do door-to-door -door sales, perhaps because he was desperate for a quick commission. He was young, 
He was energetic. <laughs> he was pretty affable. And he was able to improvise on the prepared sales pitch. Um, so it sounded authentic. He was telling me about himself as he was doing this. And, and actually, I kind of liked him. <laughs> um, I kind of would have enjoyed hanging out with him even a little bit longer. But in the course of this uh, semi-scripted banter, he, he asked me what I did for a living. And, and so I told him, I'm a church pastor, kind of emphasizing that it's a really busy time of year and kind of hoping he would make this shtick kind of quick. But that's when he really did abandon his script. And he said, a church pastor, really? That's interesting. That's actually pretty cool because I have recently been trying to reconnect with my faith. I just joined a church, as a matter of fact. And I asked him about how that was going for him. And he said, oh, pretty good. But you know what? There is stuff I just don't get. <laughs> Maybe you could explain some things to me. <laughs> I was open to hearing his questions although I was a little taken aback by what he asked. He said, yeah, I don't think I'm going to go to church on Easter. I mean, I don't get what it's about. Church is supposed to be about the Savior Jesus Christ and all that, but I don't understand what that has to do with Easter. Now, I will tell you, I have spent my entire life in an Easter-based culture, I've always taken to heart the nickname, some have applied to, to Moravians in particular, were sometimes called the Easter people. So I'm unaccustomed, even though I, I know I should be ready for this question at a moment's notice, I'm really unaccustomed to anyone not having a working knowledge of the story. And I, I, I was trying really hard not to be rude, but I'm afraid that like my eyebrows probably like lifted off my head when, when he asked me, when he said he didn't understand what Jesus had to do with Easter. Well, trying not to sound too stunned, I asked him what he thought Easter was about if it wasn't about our Savior Jesus Christ. And he said, Easter's the day Christ died because of sin, and I don't think the church should be celebrating that. I mean, it seems like a really sad thing to me. And I don't get what eggs and bunnies and chocolates have to do with it. If you ask me, that's all out of whack. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, how I wished in that moment I could have handed him a helium balloon right there. This poor guy was stuck in the valley of bad news. He had learned the part where you equate sin and death. And he knew that the dead Jesus had something to do with that equation. But he hadn't been exposed to the risen Savior. He was trying to find faith for living, but so far it had only been deflated and flat and actually worrisome. How worrisome would it be to think that that's the end of the story. I tried to help him reframe a bit. I said, yeah, Jesus did die, and we call that day Good Friday. But Easter is about the sheer power of God's love overcoming all that. Oh, my door-knocking new friend, I want you to know hope. I want you to know promise. I want you to know possibility. I want your trust in your risen Savior to be a gift that lets your spirit soar in delightful directions. I did invite him to worship this morning, but that van he'd been traveling in, it had come from South Philly not knowing how else to support him. I did it. I subscribed to what he rang my doorbell for. <laughs> Sigh. <laughs> but who knows? Maybe the act of a generous person of faith was 
a bit of encouragement for him. Maybe, maybe it was the thing he needed to, to rise up, to start to overcome his circumstances. Maybe it was the thing he needed to, to help him rise up over maybe what has been a, a challenging life. I hope, I hope what I had to tell him about Jesus also was there to help him rise up. And I hope you are able to rise up within yourself to, to know always within, within yourself, not only on Easter Sunday, not only with escape balloons on the ceiling, um, but always, always that the Lord is risen indeed. We give thanks this morning. That's the ultimate thing we give thanks for, isn't it? God's constancy through a risen Savior. And we spend a moment uh, to think about for what we are grateful. And if you are visiting with us, um, please know that, that we are so very glad you are here. We're not going to pass an offering plate this morning, uh, but for anyone in the space, if you'd care to leave an offering in support of this congregation and the work we do being, being the church in our neighborhood, there are plates at, at, uh, at the doors. Um, and we know that folks have given through many, many means, through the mail, through online giving portals and uh, and always whatever whatever comes to us in that plate is is appreciated, um, but we do want to pause. Even though we're not passing those plates, we want, we want to pause and we want to think about how we put ourselves uh, forward for God, how we give ourselves for God, um, recognizing Jesus gave His life. He gives life back to us. We think about how we can best honor, honor our risen Savior with the way we serve here in our church, out there in our community, uh, the way we give our best selves, uh, what we know, what we know how to do, um, the skills, the talents, what we have practiced, what we have accumulated in wisdom and knowledge, how we share that with one another and with a world that is hurting um, and needs our attention, how we give of ourselves and how we give of all of our resources, and that includes our financial resources. Um, we think about, we just think about how beautiful, how beautiful our risen Savior is, and we, we hope that will encourage us all to respond in the best way that we possibly can. I'm going to offer a spoken prayer for us and our response this morning uh, will be hymn 358. So I'll ask you to turn to that hymn and uh, uh, have it ready. Um, and, um, and we will stand for that when, when I ask you to. Uh, but for now, let us pray. Holy One, Holy Risen One, um, let us with a, a joyful spirit dedicate ourselves and our very lives to your care and to your service, to your wonder. Um, we are amazed by who you are. And on this day, especially, especially, we strive to connect with you. And so however best we can do that, we pray in our hearts, in our own minds, uh, in our own silent space, this Holy One is how I offer myself to you. Take just a moment to have that conversation with God in the quiet. Hear our prayers, receive the offerings of our lives, the lives that are actually your lives, your life, and let us stand and let us rise to sing to you our praises.
hope you're smiling. I can't not sing that hymn and not smile. Ah. So I do invite you to turn your attention to uh, the work of the church. Um, my life is often divided into segments that go something like getting ready for Easter and then after Easter. And so, you know, I have to read the announcements myself to see what happens after today because it's like, it's just, it's just like you fall off a cliff. It's like I haven't looked ahead. So um, you have announcements on a, on a pink page or they came uh, emailed to your, to your email box. If, if you are, um, especially if you worship with us online or um, if you are in person and you want to receive our, our newsletters, our and our weekly uh, bulletins uh, by email, please just let the office know that and we'll connect you so you know what, what is what uh, going on in, in our world. Um, but uh, some things I do want to point out that, that are now definitely in the, oh, we gotta pay attention to it because it's after Easter. Um, we have a big project coming up. Um, uh, I think it's gonna be wonderful fun, but we are going to be hosting a spring craft and vendor show um, that will be on Saturday, April 20th. So um, come back ready to, to support that and shop. Um, there'll be beautiful, beautiful uh, things for sale, handmade things for sale, and there'll be delicious food for purchase. Um, and so make sure you put that on your calendar and tell, tell everyone you can. Um, but also, uh, it, please, if you're able to chip in on, on making that happen, we'd all be most appreciative. Uh, Amy, raise your hand. Uh, Amy would love especially to talk with you about how you can, you know those gifts, those talents, that time you have we just talked about, Amy can help you find ways to, to, to use that to God's glory and to help us out here. So um, please be, be ready for that and sign up to, sign up to lend a hand. And um, you want to say something about that? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, they, they look good, but yeah, we have to we have to put a few finishing touches on them. Um, if, especially if you live in a high traffic area where there's a lot of visibility, we'd really appreciate it if you'd be willing to put uh, uh, some of our advertising in your yard. So. Um, also, want you to know about. Uh, um, some uh, programs coming up. Um, we have been uh, learning about racism so healing can happen and uh, the, the group uh, that has been engaged in that is kind of launching a new, uh, new phase of that. It's a great time to, to join in um, if you haven't been a part of that before and uh, you'll see the details about that. Um, that's starting up on, on April 10th so um, read up on that. And also I wanna highlight um, Having just been on, on God's Acre this morning, I, I do want to highlight uh, that there will be um, a walking tour on uh, April 13th and also on April 14th. Same tour, two different times and dates. Um, uh, highlighting the, the men and women of African descent in early Bethlehem, both enslaved and free. And um, so uh, if that's of interest to you, I hope you'll um, be aware of that as well. Um, there's a great program uh, coming up on Cooking for Crowds, a Serve Safe program uh, offered at East Hills. Uh, Brother Bob Wingrove is, is uh, heading that up. And um, if, if you want to help with the f ongoing freezer ministry, the Bethlehem uh, freezer ministry, if you are someone who likes to help out at the emergency shelter, if you're someone who likes to help out at Essentials Cafe, uh, these are good reasons to to uh, to take that uh, that course, so uh, be aware of that. And also, uh, please note as things start to burst into bloom, um, save a spot in your garden for coleus, um, hand propagated uh, right here. Those will be for sale um, starting in May. Anything else I need to highlight this morning? 
Again, we're so glad all of you are here. We hope that if you are looking for a church home, uh, that you might consider College Hill. It's, it's wonderful to, to be together in the space with you. Next week will be birthday Sunday. Um, so for especially for anyone who has an April uh, birthday, uh, come and we'll sing to you. And I think there'll be like a slice of cake for you even. So, um, all right. So as we, uh, as we complete our worship this morning, uh, we will be using the Easter liturgy. Um, you'll find it in your book of worship beginning on page 90. When we get to the end of that, um, I'll ask you to flip to hymn 543. Um, we want to end with singing hallelujah, praise the Lord. It's in the liturgy, but not enough verses. So if you want to sing all the verses, you gotta, you gotta flip over to uh, 543. So just so you're prepared for that. But Sue is going to uh, lead us in this. So uh, page 90, and I think you're gonna wanna stand. The Lord is risen. The Lord, the Lord is risen indeed. Sing this aloud. Proclaim it to the ends of the earth. The Lord has set his people free. the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By Christ's great mercy, we are given new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Jesus has handed over to death for our sins. And was raised to life for our justification. Then what can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or hardship, can persecution, hunger, nakedness, peril, or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. For, for we are convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come. Nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord.
We have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We do not live to ourselves, but, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, it is for the Lord that we live. And if we die, it is for the Lord that we die. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For Christ died, rose from death, and lives again in order to be Lord of the living and of the dead. We do not want you to be in any doubt about those who have died, or to grieve over them as others do who have no hope. What we are saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. What is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. What is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. What is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. What is sown a physical body. Then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are of the earth. God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant.
before we depart, I want to give special thanks uh, to everyone who, who made Holy Week happen here, to our hardworking sacristans, to our church musicians who were phenomenal. Um, and I'll give a shout out to office staff as well. And uh, so, and kids, remember, if you want a balloon um, after our prayer time, come on up and we'll, we'll make sure you get one. And now, as we go into the world, let us, like a balloon, uh, carry with lightness and, and with wonder and, and, and with all joy uh, the properties of our risen Savior with us as we go. Amen. Please be seated. Hold it. <laughs> I'll just hold it. Okay. Put it where you need it. Okay.